Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at the KO. Uh, this is by Chris Scott Mods, CSM, and um, it looks like this. Now, this is the stab wood version, okay? There are going to be very many different types available. Now, I'm just going to quote from the email that Chris sent on to me, just so I've made sure that I've got the details absolutely bang on. Uh, you've got a stab wood and Delrin version, and that's coming in at £325. You have an Alumide 3D printed version, which is £275. Price includes all the fees and shipping within the UK. If it's going overseas, uh, you're looking at an extra £5 for shipping in the EU and £10 for the rest of the world. The models that are currently available, and if I could find pictures, which I'm sure I will, I will pop them up while I'm blethering away here. Uh, you've got the KO Ninja, which is a black Delrin. Uh, you've got a KO Stormtrooper, which is white Delrin. You've got a KO Stabwood, which is what I'm showing you here just now. And a KO 3D, which is Alumide, stainless or black trim. And there's very, a variety of colours of Alumide as well. Future models, you'll be happy to know, could include Piss or Ultum. Uh, yes, it could include Ultum uh, or there'll be a Panda version or an Ice version as well. So there's, there's lots of different things going on. The reason for all these different versions, and, and I will show you this, is that this thing has been designed to come to bits. Uh, you can actually basically just you undo the top plate, undo the, the bottom plate here, and the whole case, outer casing, just slides straight off. Is a single 18650 squonker. It does have a mod maker bottle inside there. It's got a mod maker 510 on the top. It uses the Yee Yee SX 475J J. Take your pick. Uh, but he will do a die codes. Is it the FL80? I think that's uh, just check in. That's an extra 50 pounds if you want to go down that route though. Now this video will be going up today, which is Thursday. Uh, Vape Fest is on this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and uh, Chris is going to have a whole heap of these at Vape Fest. After Vape Fest, he is then opening up his Facebook book, Facebook book, Facebook page, making it public. So you'll be able to join up there and order them. Uh, there is a £25 deposit on the device, uh, and then you pay in full when it's ready to ship. Now, I want to make this clear. I was lucky enough to be in a small group of people that got to test this. This is actually one of the prototype versions, but I can tell you that it's it's as close to, if not exactly the same, as the final retail version as you're going to get. Myself and some other people did get to put some feedback to Chris and, and to help him possibly make this the mod that it is today. Uh, but in saying that, this is all his, his design. He's been at this for nine months, designing this and getting it to this point. He has his own, C he built his own CNC machine. Um, everything about this is as cottage industry as you can possibly get. And, and yes, whilst I will point out pros and cons, because I believe there are some, uh, this is, is everything that I, as a vapor, this is what I love about my hobby, which is vaping. And this is just, it's bra. Or brilliant, as, as non-Scottish people may say. When this arrives, it's going to come in a box with the CSM logo on it. Inside, you've got a flip front and you will find uh, your mod, but you will also find uh, instructions on how to insert the battery correctly. You will also find an authenticity card and you will find a couple of these little doohickeys, which I'll cover in a second. So, once again, I have the, the KO Stabwood version here. And just give you a quick look around this. And I do think it's a very pretty thing. I'm not normally a fan of green stab, but uh, I do this. I think this has come out quite nice. Now, up the top, where we have a mod maker 510 up here, and once again, this is a squonker. It's uh, spring loaded, the adjuster in there. Uh, I do get a 24mm atomizer on there, no problem at all. Uh, the plate that you see on the top, this was actually done by Darwin Mods, um, who's a, he's a good friend of Chris, Eddie. Uh, and you can see, hopefully, you can see the machining on this and how he's done it. He's taken it from you know, the 510 and, and worked it out. And it really is quite impressive. 
obviously you have your stab wood shell. Uh, now I will point out that Chris actually makes his own stab wood. He actually sells his stab wood blocks to a lot of manufacturers around the world, but uh, so this is done in-house by himself. I have a ModMaker 510 squonk bottle in there just now, and you can see just by pushing the button here, oh, upside down, turn that round, that uh, I've got the Yeehee board in there, and this is operated via a, a joystick here. So I'm not going to go into great detail on this board, but it's if you've used the 350 in the past, it will be quite familiar. Uh, you know, just pushing down on the button, and then I can move up and down and I can adjust my wattage and y you can get through the whole thing. It's it's very, the navigation is actually very, very similar to the SX350 Jiv V2. Uh, you're just using the one control knob. And just to make, make it clear, I mean, it does have temperature control and all that kind of stuff. You can connect it to the XS SXi uh, software in your PC and it is a 75 watt device. Height wise here, you're looking at about 77, just over 77 mil in height. It's, 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 it's a short wee thing. And it's widest point here, you're looking under, just under 48 millimeters. Uh, but you can see that the dimensions, see how it's all different angles, you know, it's all different shapes going on here. It's not a triangle, it's not round, it's just, it's so weird. But it is incredibly comfortable to hold. Uh, and I'll cover the whole left right handed thing when we have a chat at the end. On the bottom, we do have a carbon fiber plate. Now, this is real carbon fiber, it's not uh, fake or anything like that. And just here, there is a, a cutout, just here, uh, which allows you to get your nail in and just pull that out. Now, I don't have, I mean, look, I hardly have any nails whatsoever, but the cutout does allow for you to get in there and I yeah, have had no issues with that. Out she comes. And you can see that that's real carbon fibre and you have two little magnets in there. Which I hasten to add, I installed these magnets and I got them the right way around. Now first thing, I'm going to take out the mod maker bottle. Now this is, obviously this is just down to me, but this is a negative on my part. Uh, when you look at the size of the window here, you can just see the edge or the neck of the bottle, but you can't actually get in at it. I would just, if that had just been a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and then I would have been able to get in there and slide that bottle out, no problem whatsoever. Uh, but just now, it's 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 not the easiest bottle to get out, I'm afraid. And because of my lack of nails, I just end up putting this in here and just, boink, catches it, and out she comes. And like the Kenzie, the previous squonker, you can see it's got a metal tube running right down through here and this goes right into the base of your bottle. So here's your mod maker bottle and this takes me back to these little guys here. Uh, because of the, you know, the diameter of that metal uh, pipe running down there, you do have to use these little plastic, well not plastic, but these little guys here. So they just can like sit in the neck of your bottle and it makes sure that, you know, your, your squonk bottle doesn't leak uh, and it keeps everything nice and airtight. I have no issues with it. It works. Uh, it squonks well and it does the job it's supposed to do. Now, going back to the card, it does have instructions on how to insert and remove the battery. Uh, now, this is where it's slightly strange to your, your normal mods. Uh, we have this little tab here, this little copper tab, and basically, you just, I'm going to push my thumb down on it, pull, out it comes and out the battery comes. So the positive goes down. The positive faces down the way. And once you've you know got your contact out, once you've put your freshly charged battery in, you just take your contact, you can see the dimple on it there, that's obviously going to face down onto the positive. And I just that's easy doing this in camera actually, and just pop that in there like that, and that's it. It's not the hardest thing in the world to do, but um, for me it is, whilst I have no issue with it on a day-to-day -day basis and using it, well, I'll cover that at the end. But uh, I'm going to take this thing to bits uh, just to show you how easy it is. That's the base unscrewed. 
Now I'll take the top plate off. And I'm just going to, I've just given the pipe, the bottom of this pipe, just a little push, doink. And you can see here that, oh, out she comes. Let's pull her all out. And there we go. Get the button out, doink. And there we are. There's your internals. I mean, that's your mod. Now, my hope is, and Chris will probably be going, oh, shut up, uh, but I, I really hope that he makes it so that you can buy uh, these shells so that you can just then start putting it in the, you know, having a collection of shells, if you like. I just think that would be an awesome option. Uh, putting it back together, I'm just going to take my fire button and I'm just going to drop it in here, obviously keeping it upside down, if you like, so the button doesn't fall out. And then just push this down here. Pushing it down, make sure I've got that joystick. There it goes. All good together. Just going to give that a little push up inside here. Make sure that it's sitting out. And then as the good old Haynes manual used to say, um, refitting is the opposite of removal. Or is that the words they used to say? I don't know, but it used to really annoy me that. Find myself another battery because that one was a bit flat. Chuck that in. Nipples pointing out like that. Take my contact. This could actually do with a clean. Now, just want to point this out. I put these screws back in and this is really tight to get in. So I'm just going to back it off a little quarter turn here. Um, and yeah, that's a lot easier now. Uh, so if you just find that this is a real pain to get in and out, you know, just back this off just a tiny little bit. And it doesn't help when I'm covered in e-liquid as well. And there we go, she's back in. Get my squat bottle. That's her in there, and chuck the plate back on the bottom, and there we go, we're good to go again. I hope it still works. Oof. And that's it for the, the KO stab version from CSM. Should also point out, you know, USB on the front, so you can charge the, the internal battery with a USB lead. Now, that might appeal to some people because they may find that, uh, you know, doing the whole dance with uh, the little tab there is a bit of a pain in the backside and you may just prefer to just charge your battery using this. So I've now got uh, this back together. I'm vaping at 35 watts in a 0 0.4 ohm build. I've got the Haku RDA with a single coil in there and a, a, I was going to say piss again, an Ultim drip tip. Have a quick vape. It's strange, I never actually, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here. I never jumped up and down and said the Haku was the best thing under the sun, uh, unlike a lot of people. Uh, I did say it was a good RDA, but um, do you know, after spending even more time with it, I think the true measure of a device is how often you use it. Uh, and, and I do go back to the Haku a hell of a lot, which is, um, yeah, it's probably a good sign. Anyway, um, you wanted to know about the, this this KO. Now, form factor. The form factor won't appeal to everybody. I get that. But um, it is a strange shape. I mean, it is a strange shape. There's, there's straight like, it's going, going like this all, all over the place. However, um, my right hand, that just sits in there perfectly. And the firing button here, no problem at all. It's and it's look how small it is. I mean, it is a small mod. Uh, the, but I can also hold it in that, and I can thumb fire with that on my left hand very, very easily. Or I can use my finger fire here as well. I personally find that it works in both hands, and for me, I don't see the need for a left and right hand version. However, Chris is making a left and right handed version. I think he's calling them L and D because um, he's an engineer and, and they have strange naming conventions. Uh, but he will do a left or right handed version for you. I just find it works in either really, really well. I'll get the cons out of the way first. Uh, the cons for me are right now uh, are removing the bottle. 
Now, when I say it's a con, it is a con. There's no two ways about it. And I tend to use my Mod Maker refill bottle where I just screw it into the 510 and just squeeze it and, and it fills up the bottle. I don't have to take the bottle out. However, in saying that, I had, as cheap as this is, not everybody wants to go out and spend extra money. Uh, just if it was just a tiny, tiny little bit higher there, I could just get my nail into it and pull it out really, really easily. Uh, I would like to have seen that. My other negative is, and this is, whilst it's not necessarily a negative for me, it's not something I find issue with, is the battery tab here. Actually, the fact that it's it's a removable piece, uh, it's something that can be lost, if you like. Also, you have to make sure it's kept clean at all times. So, there's a couple of things there that... Um, it's different and I love different and it's something that I haven't seen before and, and I'm quite a fan of that but I have to be aware that whilst that might appeal to me I do appreciate that to a lot of people this setup might be a, a bit of a con. If it is then just charge it via the USB but um, I, I've just got I can only be honest and say that in the time I've been using it I've not found it an issue. Uh, the only issue I really have had is when putting the mod back together I've tightened up these two wee screws too much and it's a bit stiff getting that tab in. Quarter turn on both screws and it slides in and out no problem. That is it for the cons. I think that's all I've got for you on the cons. Uh, because I've, I've had, <laughs> because everything that we found as a con before we all fed back to Chris and he changed. Um, I'm actually, and I'll be completely honest, I will put this in the description um, if it is the case. I, it was fed back to him by a couple of us that we thought the window should be a bit bigger. Some people didn't find it an issue and just thought use this. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if he's changed this or not, but I'll let you know in the description if it has changed. But right now I have to mention it as a con. The pros, ha, right, the pros for me and um, as I said at the start, and I'm trying not to harp on about this, is the fact that the, he's built the CNC from scratch. It's a bespoke CNC machine. He built it to make his own mods. Uh, the stainless steel top plate is actually made by another UK cottage industry mod maker, Eddie at Darwin Mods. The bottle, the 510 UK by Rick at modmaker.co.uk. And the block is made in-house as well so f for me it, it's, it's everything I love and, and I will stop there I will mention that no more but just know that <sighs> I love it the board is it's typical yee-hee it's, it's, the, the manual's pretty shit for it um, but if you have had any yee-hee board before uh, the SX350 Jai or V2 uh, then you will find it easy enough to get around. It's really straightforward. And I am quite a fan of this little joystick affair. Uh, I wasn't sure at first, but just for adjusting the wattage now is just push down on the button and then just push it up or push it down. And you can get through the settings really quickly as well. So I do like the board. It's 75 watts, so it covers everything that I need for a single 18650 mod. Ergonomics, uh, comfortable in the hand, works left or right handed, I like that. I will mention that the customer support that you will get from Chris is is second to none. I, I mean it's up there with the best, you know, you, there's many mod makers out there that I just, you know, tip my hat to for the way they deal with their customers and uh, Chris is one of them. Also don't forget there are lots of different versions as well. You've got the 3D printed Alumide version as well. Uh, you know, it's, there's pretty much something there for everybody. And I am going to stop there. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie to you, this is a bit of a rushed review. Uh, not in that I haven't had the product for a long time, I've had it for quite a while. Uh, in that uh, I wanted to get this video recorded, to, I just decided to do this now. Uh, to get this video out so that people that are going to Vape Fest can maybe get a closer look at the mod before they go to Vape Fest at the weekend and decide whether or not they want to go and buy one or once it opens up the Facebook group after Facebook do you want to buy one. 
yes, I'm not going to bullshit you. It's uh, to a lot of people, this will be a lot of money for a piece of vape gear. To a lot of people, it's not a lot of money. Uh, it's all down to your budget at the end of the day, but it does have different versions, different materials to, to you know, to suit your budget. Big shout out to Chris. Uh, thank you once again, buddy, for letting me play with the prototype and to taking on board some of my feedback. I hope it helped, uh, just even if just a tiny little bit. Uh, not just my feedback, but everybody that got a prototype. Um, and I, that's it. To you guys, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully, I will see you at Vape Fest over the weekend if you're go if you're going. But that's it. Catch you later. Thanks, guys.